Hello, God bless you. Welcome to today's daily devotion. My name is Stephen, the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship, located in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn, New York. And uh, our daily devotion series is where we read a chapter from the Bible together. We post these videos five days a week. Then, you know, they're there. You can access them at any time. Whether that's along with us um, as we go five days a week or at any other time that you choose. If you're, if you're just finding us, you can uh, go back. We've got playlists that are organized by biblical book. And each chapter in those playlists are a chapter from that book. So there's a playlist. That's the Gospel of Matthew with all the chapters of Matthew. Playlist that's Mark. A playlist that's Luke. We're, we're making the playlist now uh, for John. And today we're reading John chapter 7. Uh, John chapter 7 is 52 verses, and it begins with a little exchange between Jesus and his biological, for want of a better term, brothers. Mary and Joseph had other children after Jesus, and uh, I had a conversation with someone recently who was unaware of that, and it seems as though uh, some people are unaware of that. Mary and Joseph had other kids after Jesus. And there's some teaching out there that would contradict that, but it's, it's we're going to read it here. So let's do so now. John chapter 7 begins in verse 1. After this, Jesus traveled around Galilee, and he wanted to stay out of Judea, where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. But soon it was time for the Jewish festival of shelters, and Jesus' brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea. That's where your followers can see your miracles. They're mocking him. You can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers didn't believe in him. Jesus replied, Now's not the right time for me to go, but you can go anytime. The world can't hate you, but it does hate me because I accuse it of doing evil. You go on. I'm not going to this festival because my time has not yet come. And after saying these things, Jesus remained in Galilee. But after his brothers left for the festival, Jesus also went, though secretly, staying out of the public view. The Jewish leaders tried to find him at the festival and kept asking if anyone had seen him. And there was a lot of grumbling about him among the crowds. Some argued, he's a good man. But others said, mm, he's nothing but a fraud who deceives the people. No one had the courage to speak favorably about him in public, for they were afraid of getting in trouble with the Jewish leaders. Then midway through the festival, Jesus went up to the temple and began to teach, and the people were surprised when they heard him. How does he know so much when he hasn't been trained, they asked. So Jesus told him, My message is not my own. It comes from God who sent me. Anyone who wants to do the will of God will know whether my teaching is from God or merely my own. Those who speak for themselves want glory for themselves, but a person who seeks to honor the one who sent him speaks truth, not lies. Moses gave you the law but none of you obeys it. In fact, you're trying to kill me. The crowd replied, you're demon-possessed. Who's trying to kill you? And Jesus replied, I did one miracle on the Sabbath, and you were amazed. But you work on the Sabbath, too, when you obey Moses' law of circumcision. Actually, this tradition of circumcision began with the patriarchs long before the law of Moses. For if the correct time for circumcising your son falls on the Sabbath, you go ahead and do it, so as not to break the law of Moses. So why should you be angry with me for healing a man on the Sabbath? Look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly. And some of the people who lived in Jerusalem started to ask each other, Isn't he the man they're trying to kill? But here he is, speaking in public, and they say nothing to him. Could our leaders possibly believe that he is the Messiah? But how could he be? For we know this man com we know where he comes from. When the Messiah comes, he will simply appear, and no one will know where he comes from. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he called out, Yes, you know me. You know where I come from. But I'm not here on my own. The one who sent me is true, and you don't know him. I know him because I come from him. He sent me to you. Then the leaders tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his time had not yet come. Many among the crowds at the temple believed in him. After all, they said, Would you expect the Messiah to do more miraculous signs than this man has done? When the Pharisees heard that the crowds were whispering such things, they and the leading priests sent temple guards to arrest Jesus. But Jesus told them, 
I will be with you only a little longer, and then I'll return to the one who has sent me. You'll search for me, but not find me, and you cannot go where I'm going. The Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go, they asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he'll even teach the Greeks. What does he mean when he says, you'll search, me, search for me, but not find me? And you cannot go where I'm going. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. When the crowds heard him say this, some of them declared, Surely this man is the prophet we've been expecting. Others said, He is the Messiah. Still others said, But he can't be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where King David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. Some even wanted him arrested, but no one laid a hand on him. When the temple guards returned without having arrested Jesus, the leading priests and the Pharisees demanded, Why didn't you bring him in? We've never heard anyone speak like this. The guards responded, Have you been led astray to the Pharisees mocked? Is there a single one of us rulers or Pharisees who believes in him? This foolish crowd follows him, but they are ignorant of the law. God's curse is on them. And then Nicodemus, the leader who had met with Jesus earlier, spoke up. Is it legal to convict a man before he's given a hearing, he asked. They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Galilee. And there's a note here uh, that says the most ancient Greek manuscripts do not include the following verses, which are John 53 through, uh, it's the last verse in uh, John chapter 7. Excuse me, John chapter 7, verse 53, through John 8, verse 11. These passages are included in some man manuscripts, but not the oldest manuscripts that we have found. Verse 53 says, Then the meeting broke up, and everyone went home. Thank you so much for participating in John chapter 7. I hope it's blessed you to include uh, some of God's Word in your day today. If you think it might bless someone else, please feel free to share. Uh, with anybody who, uh, who, who might like uh, a tool such as this, might benefit from it. We've been blessed that you're here, and hope you'll join us again next time for John chapter 8. God bless you.